So please make your way down into the crocodile. As we lie down flat on the tummy, you will bring your hands forward. And today you might stack your hands one on top of the other, resting the forehead down. And now to the legs, you can touch your big toes together, but you could also widen your legs out much further than I can with my limited space and turning the toes to face outward instead. Just have a little tune in, not just physically what's right for you, legs wide or close, but maybe also energetically, just noticing what type of energy comes through when you touch your big toes or when you open your legs out wide and then go with the one that you're most comfortable with. Make sure that your arms are sliding out just enough as if you could melt down into the mat in this stage so that we're not weight bearing through the arms or the shoulders. All of that is completely soft. And as your forehead is then resting down, I invite you to become aware of the shape, to notice how you're feeling this very moment, lying down on the front. As you breathe, gently still, the belly might push a little bit down into the mat. And if you had breakfast, that might be a little bit challenging. If you have an empty stomach, that might actually feel quite nice. I invite you to notice how the other side of the body is going. And maybe also if there's already some breath to be felt in the waistline and in your back. And we will increase the sensations that come from breathing by deepening the breath. So while we're breathing now, a yogic breath pattern, we're moving the breath from the belly into the ribs and we're trying to lift it right up towards the collarbones. And we're breathing out from our belly to the ribs, to the collarbones. Allow yourself that breath in and out of your nose. And the awareness is um, with the movement in the body as the breath flows. So you might get a deeper massage into the abdomen, but you might also feel the breath expanding and really stretching out into sides and back. Stay with that for another three breaths. And then once you've completed those breaths, just placing your legs again to hip distance. With the next inhalation, leave your arms soft on the ground, but lifting your head and chest lightly. And when you're breathing out, lowering the forehead back down onto the hand. We'll do that again as if we're slowly awakening from the crocodile, inhaling, lifting head, chest, and exhaling to release back down. Repeat that, but lift your right leg here as well as you're inhaling now and then exhaling to release it. Left leg is lifting as the head and the chest come off the ground and the breath out to release it. Leave both legs down on the ground and try once more to lift head and chest. And if you like, your arms can lift off the floor now as well. You could even keep your forehead resting on your hands and then releasing back down. Now, if you like that, you could lift the arms as well as you lift your head and chest and the right leg. And then releasing back down. And the same here with the left leg, as you might lift your arms as well, and then releasing that down. Now with the next one, we will hold, lifting both legs, the head and the chest, maybe the arms. If you're not lifting the arms, keep them soft on the ground. Reach down into the toes, activate the buttocks a little bit more. Keep lifting through your heart, your gaze lightly. 
and then release that back down onto the mat. Let your hands come down by the sides of your floating ribs. And as you inhale now, push up onto all fours. And then reach back with your buttocks towards the heels into a child's pose. Now, morning bodies are different to evening bodies and it might take a little time to just ease into that shape. If you find the knees closed doesn't quite do it for you, you can widen your knees out and maybe that gives you a little bit more range of movement. I'm also wiggling a little bit from side to side, finding my ease. And you're welcome to do the same. Let's extend the arms forward and spread out through the fingers. On the inhale now, come up onto all fours. And if you widened your knees, you might want to bring them back into hip distance. We will tuck our toes under and then lift the knees off the floor and stretch our hips up for a downward dog. On the next inhale, lower the knees. You might flatten the feet out, if not too much for lower back and reach again into an extended child's pose. With the inhale, come to all fours. With the out breath, into downward dog. On the in-breaths, lower the knees. On the out-breaths, sit to the heels. We'll go for one more round with that very same sequence. Very familiar to some of you. And before we reach back into child's pose, we will pause in a tabletop. So while your hands are down, Maybe the wrist just slightly out from underneath your shoulders. While your knees are underneath your hips, we're pressing down into the shins, the tops of the feet. Now lift your right foot and shin off the ground, but leave your knee on the floor. And when you're inhaling, let that knee, uh, leg swing out to the right and try and have a look at the foot. And when you're exhaling, bring the foot across the body and look at it again. Let's repeat that twice or to each side. On the inhale, swing it to the right, squeeze into the right side. On the exhale, to the left and the squeeze into the left side of the waist. And once more to the right, not just the foot, but the gaze to the foot as well. And then to the left. As we come into the center now, lift the right knee off the ground and extend out through the heel of the foot. Find your stability in the arms. Point your toes as you breathe out through nose and knee together underneath. With the inhale, extend out to the heel and up to the crown. And with the out breath, curling back in. And then one more time as we inhale to extend on the out breaths to round. And then extending out to the leg one more time and landing those tucked under toes onto the mat. Finding your stability here, either with one knee on the ground or with both knees off the mat in a plank position. We will all create space between our shoulder blades if the knees are off the floor, we'll press down to the heels and we'll bring our tailbone in the direction of the heels. Strong hold in your plank. Then soften the knees. Lift your hips up for a downward facing dog. Inhale to come to all fours. Exhale to move into child's pose. Now in this child's pose, just for a release through hands and wrists, come up onto the fingertips, building little cups with the fingers, the hands, and let your shoulders roll open. Elbows can be soft here. The head might be off the floor, nice and long spine. And then spread the hands back out onto the mat as if you wanted to suck the mat into the palms of your hands. We will inhale to come back onto all fours. 
Now, adjusting your stems again if you need it. So we're nicely grounded through shins, tops of feet, hands. Make sure the elbow greases are facing each other rather than forward for stability. As we hold that, we're now lifting the left foot and chin off the ground. Again, leave your knee on the floor. And while you're inhaling, swing this foot to the left and have a good look at it. And when you're breathing out, swing this foot to the right and look at it again. Same as on the other side, we'll repeat twice more to each side. So we're focusing on the squeeze on the left with the inhale and the squeeze on the right with the exhale. Last round. And as we come back into center, we'll lift the knee off the floor, extending out through the heel of the foot. Then point the foot and as you exhale, draw your knee and nose together underneath. With the inhale, stretch out to the heel, lengthen your spine, point and exhale to curl in. One more round here, breathing in for length and out to curl in. Let's extend the left leg once more and landing the tucked under toes on the mat. Already strengthened through your arms, mind the elbow greases, they're still facing each other. And if you would like to, you can lift the right knee off the ground as well. Coming back to our plank, creating space between shoulder blades, heels coming back, tailbone moving back. Stay for one more breath. Then soften your knees, roll the spine up for a down dog and come back into the previous flow as you inhale all fours, exhaling child's pose, inhaling all fours, exhaling downward dog. Keep flowing between these three poses for a little, all fours is always the same on an inhale and we're alternating extended child's pose and downward facing dog with the out breath. Keep flowing, strong connection of it all, connected to movement, connected to breath and present within those two will connect the mind to this little flow. When you arrive in your next downward facing dog, please stay there. And come out of linear movement and maybe squeeze a little bit into the sides or walk out through your legs, swing your hips, move your head. Just noticing what serves you at this moment. Before you're walking your feet up to the front end of the mat. And when you're arriving there, slide your hands up to your shins, press into them and lengthen your spine into a half lift. And when you're exhaling, softening down to a forward bend. Let's take time to roll up and use your lower abdomen to assist you with that as you're curling slowly up into standing. When standing, you might want to roll your shoulders a little bit back. And as we find our tall stands, and please do that at the front of the mat, I just turned towards you so you can see better. With your next inhale, lifting both arms up and lifting the heels off the floor. See if you can pause here for a moment and reaching up tall. And as you're exhaling, Lower the heels and lower your arms. Let's do that again. On the in breath, both arms are lifting. The heels might come off the ground. Reach the heels up as much as you can if you do. Then releasing the heels and the arms back down. We'll do that one last time. Breathing in, lifting both arms. Heels coming off the ground, stretching up tall. 
And this time, while you lower your heels, let your hands come through the midline and fold down into Uttanasana or forward bend. With the next inhale, lengthen your spine forward. With the exhale, step your right foot back into a lunge. Breathe in and collapse the lunge. Sink into the knee, relax the head down. With the hour breath now, rolling slowly into standing. And with the inhale, lifting both arms again. And now settle down into the lunge as you soften into it. We will take an inhale from here to maybe lift the gaze. And we will bring our hands to the heart while turning the upper body to the left. Stay standing up tall, just in a twist. We will open the arms out to shoulder height now with the next inhalation. And then with the hour breath taking a windmill as we place the hands down onto the mat and step back into downward dog. With the inhale now, come onto all fours. Exhaling into child's pose. We will slide along the mat to lie down on the front. And we'll bring our hands back to rest by the floating ribs, the forehead coming to the ground, the tops of the feet into the mat. With the in breath, lifting the head and the chest. With the out breath, releasing again. Let's do that again. With the inhale, lifting head and chest, maybe the hands now as well. And with the out breath, releasing that. We'll do that one more time, lifting up on the inhale, holding here, anchor the tops of the feet into the floor. Keep your shoulder blades squeezing together, elbows nice and close. And then release again to the mat. On the inhale, come up onto all fours. Tuck toes, out breath, down the dog. Soften your knees a little, stretch the tailbone up and back. Mind, shoulders, elbows here facing each other as well. We'll take the right leg off the ground and extend out through the heel of the foot. Then point the foot as we breathe out to draw the knee in. We'll do that again. Let's inhale, extend out through the right heel. Exhale, bring the knees together. One more time, inhaling to extend. And this time, if you like, you can step straight forward in between the hands. Rise to fingertips now as we lengthen through the spine. On the exhale, collapse it. On the inhale, step forward and a half lift. On the out breath, fold. Now use your inhale to push off your feet and lifting both arms up. Hold here as you might lift your heels again off the floor. Then release the heels down as we're breathing out to soften the arms. Let's reach the arms up again, lifting the heels off the floor. Reach nice and tall. And again, lowering the heels as we're releasing the arms. The next one will take us to the other side. So let's lift up, heels, arms reaching up. And while you land your heels, let your hands come through the midline and fold back down into Uttanasana. Ada Uttanasana as you lengthen your spine forward. And now the left foot steps back into a lunge. We will collapse that lunge. And we're rolling up on an out breath, lifting the arms up to a complete our high lunge. 
and just settling in maybe with a slightly deeper bend of the left or back knee. So we find hopefully some stability. You might choose to look up on the next inhale. And with the exhale, we'll bring our hands to the heart and turn towards the right. We will hold here, staying upright and tall. And with the next inhale, the opportunity to open the arms out to shoulder height. Nothing else has changed quite yet. We'll then take a windmill to place our hands back down onto the floor. Stepping back into a downward facing dog. On the inhale, let your knees come down to tabletop. On the exhale, reaching back into extended child's pose. Let's slide across the mat once more to lie down and ready for a cobra. Hands down by floating ribs, tops off the feet into the mat. But now as we're lifting the head to the chest, maybe the hands to the right leg comes off the floor as well. And we're exhaling to release that again. Let's repeat with the left leg, inhaling and exhaling to release. Once more with each side. Hands can be on or off the mat as you do. You don't even have to lift any legs at all if that's not what you need this morning. Your next one, we'll lift both legs, hit chest, maybe the hands to squeeze the shoulder blades back and down, hold there for a little bit. Just breathing, holding, maybe there's some heat creeping up in the body. And then release that back down. On your inhale, come to all fours. And this time we're also stretching back to the heels as a short counter pose to the back bend. With the inhale, then return to all fours. With the exhale to down the dog. Within your down dog, soften again. Lengthen through the spine, open shoulders. And when you feel safe and secure, you could also be on all fours, of course. Extend your left leg out through the heel as you inhale. Point the foot when you're breathing out, bring your knee to your chest, your nose to the knee. With the inhale, extend back out through the left heel. With the exhale, bring the knee into the chest. And one more round, breathing in to extend. And exhaling, maybe the foot comes straight towards the front. Lift up onto the fingertips as you inhale to lengthen and collapse the lunge on the elbows. With the inhale then stepping forward, half lift. And the elbows into a forward bend. Push back through your feet as you're rising up to stand, lifting the arms up, lifting the heels off the ground, and then landing the heels and releasing your arms down. I will invite you to play around with the half moon now, um, as we use that as a start for the flow. So we will begin um, with maybe a block, maybe not, but we will begin by standing on the right leg. So while you might place your foot to face forward, you could place your right hand onto a block, onto a support, and the left hand could go to the side of the waist. Lifting your left leg off the floor. As the foot is flexed, take the leg up and open your hip. Opening your shoulder as well. Maybe have a little dance. And if it suits you, you could extend your left arm towards the ceiling as well. If you need a little extra challenge, release the block from underneath and pause there. 
Now point out your toes, land the toes down, and then let's lift the front arm, that's the right one, all the way up as you let the left hand slide down your left leg and exalted lunge. We will from here lift both arms up as we center ourselves with the out breath, hands to the heart and returning again to the right. With the inhale, let your arms reach out to shoulder height. And now there's the option, you could stay here of course, to reach with that left hand down towards the ground as your right arm might extend towards the ceiling into a deeper twist. Encourage your right hip back as well as your left heel. Hold for another breath. And then swing your upper arm down to be placed by the side of the foot. Step this back into a downward facing dog. And there's time for you to flow if you choose to. Please feel free to rest. If you're coming to flow, it's plank or kneeling plank. The owl breath to lower on or towards the mat. And in breaths for a cobra or an upward facing dog. And an owl breath that could take you through a child's pose or straight back into down dog. When you come to down dog, take two deep, full breaths. Expand from belly, ribs to collarbones, and release in that order as you're breathing out. If you have three breaths, doesn't matter, perfectly fine. I'm asking you from there now to lift your left leg up as you inhale and step the foot forward on the exhale. Lower the right heel down towards the floor and reach your left arm forward as we're exalting again. The left arm reaches over the head. The right hand is resting onto the back thigh and here the front knee is bent with the foot grounded. So the full warrior shape rather than just a lunge. Let's keep the shape in the legs and lift both arms up, inhale. And as you're exhaling, reach the arms out to the sides and behind your back, interlacing the hands here. Let your arms lengthen down your back. Squeeze your shoulder blades, open your heart, your throat. Humble warrior on the out breath as we lean our upper body down to the inside of the left knee, letting the head hang down and maybe letting the arms with the hands interlaced come off the back. Not nice? Keep the hands on your back, bend your elbows, and massage gently across the lower back instead. Looking at the arches of the feet for a moment. Are they on the floor? If they are, activate these muscles in your feet to ground more deeply. We'll then release the hands down. Lifting the right heel off the floor and lengthening through the spine as we rise to the fingertips. This time with the exhale, step into forward bend. On the inhale, come to half lift. On the exhale, fold it again. Let's press down into the feet as we're rising up to standing, lifting the arms, lifting the heels off the floor, stretching out, long balancing on our toes. And then release that again, heels to the ground, arms returning down by the sides. Now, as we will change sides, you might want to place 
your block uh, ready to face your left foot. As we reach with the left hand down, the right hand might be in the side of the waist. Do the same here, peeling the straight leg off the ground, flex the foot. As the straight leg is lifting, open your hip, open your shoulder. Progressions might be to extend the right arm up. And gaze could turn as well if you're feeling confident with your balance. Or you could release the fingers from the block and just pause there. Let us point the foot in the air, land it down onto the ground, lifting through the left arm again as we're exalting, letting the right hand just slide down the right thigh. Then turn as you lift both of your arms up on the inhale. On the exhale, let your hands come to the heart as you turn to the left. In breath to open the arms out to shoulder height. Out breath if you choose to. Front hand to the floor, left hand to the ceiling. As you arrive in that deep twisted lunge, gently draw back with the left side of the hip and push out through the right heel at the same time. Switches your legs on more, supports you more in their stance. Let's swing that top arm back and down, place the hand down and step it back into a downward facing dog. If you want to take a break now, perfect. Or you might come through a vinyasa. So if you choose to roll forward into your plank, kneeling plank is fine too. Lower to the mat. Take your core bro, your upward facing dog, and then either retreat straight into down dog, or you can always use a bit of a stretch back in between. Allow yourself to arrive in this down dog to reconnect with uh, your shape and to reconnect with the full yogi breath or jai breath. Deep, slow breath in and out of the nose, centering yourself, using the down dog as a moment of rest. With the next inhale, then lift your right leg. On the out breath, bringing your foot forward and lowering the heel of the left foot to the ground. Let's reach forward with the right arm and take it straight back into exalted warrior pose. So your front knee is bent, right arm is reaching over the head, left hand is very gently sliding down the left thigh. keeping the shape of the legs while you inhale to rise up and lift both arms. On the out breath, circle the arms out and around behind your back. When you interlace, change the top fingers. Lengthen the arms down the back, squeeze your shoulder blades, open the chest, the throat, maybe bringing the head back. And humble warrior then on the out breath, as you lean down to the inside of your front knee, lower the head. Maybe the arms are lifting away from the back. If that doesn't suit, bend the elbows and slide the interlaced hands across your lower back. While we're holding the shape, check back in with the feet. Look at the arches. See if you can ground more deeply while the arches are lifted away from the floor. We'll then release the hands down either side of our front foot, lifting through the heel as we inhale to lengthen into our lunge. 
with the out breath, step it forward and down into a forward fold. With the inhale, lengthening the spine forward. And with the exhale, folding again more deeply. Let's push down into the feet, rise up, lifting the arms, maybe the heels coming off the ground one more time, stretching up tall, reaching up high, and then landing the heels as we release the arms down. While we're at the front of our mat, let's lift the arms forward in front of us or even around the ears. And with the hour breath then coming into chair pose. I've modified my arms to suit my shoulder needs and you can do the same as you might turn the palms upwards instead of facing. Allow the lower abdomen to be active to support the shape and you might want to lift your heels off the floor again. See if you can bring them nice and high off the ground while still maintaining uh, some bobbly stability around chair pose or utkadasana. Inhale. As you exhale, lower your heels, release your hands down. While you're inhaling, come to a half lift. And now step the foot back that will allow you to still face the screen as you walk your hands in between the feet turning the outer edges of the feet to align with those of the mat and lengthen forward on your fingertips on the in-breath. With the out breath, fold. Leaving your hands maybe underneath your shoulders. Lifting the shoulders gently into the sockets. If you're struggling this morning, I um, recommend to lift the head and look down to the floor. But if it's okay, you can point the crown of the head to the ground. The weight a little bit forward in the feet. So tailbone is high, making sure the knees aren't locked. And now stay. Three full breaths. Once you've completed the three breaths, let your hands come a little bit further forward. Keep your head nice and low and heel and toe your feet in. While the head is still low, let's bring the knees down onto the mat. Place the hands a little bit back from here, keeping them shoulder distance in front of the knees and then placing the very top of the head down onto the ground. So that alignment might take you to have your elbows stacked over your wrists. If you don't, bring them there. Press down with your hands into the ground. Lift the shoulders into the shoulder sockets. And if any of you know where this could go, you can take it further. But don't worry about it. The head down is just as good. Allowing your head to touch the ground, if that works, feels a little bit awkward retreat into child's pose. Otherwise, stay for another breath. With the following our breath then, sit back down towards your heels. Leaving your hands to come in front, stacking fists and resting the forehead down onto the stacked fists. We've had the head down for quite some time, including our forward fold. So allow it to realign with the heart. Then curling yourself up slowly into sitting and taking your legs out in front. Taking your feet out long. Lifting the arms up in front. If you need any warm closing things for relaxation, grab them now. 
before you're starting to round yourself down to a count of maybe five, four, three, two, one, and release down onto the floor. For our last movement before Shavasana, take your feet down onto the mat, realign your back into comfort and lift your knees over your chest. Taking one hand onto each kneecap, let's circle the knees. You can choose to keep them together or you can choose to circle them as I do, as you move them apart and back in. Changing direction. Then hold your knees in. And while you're inhaling, could you extend the legs and arms up towards the ceiling? And with the out breath, taking a hold of your knees again and squeezing them to your chest. If you prefer to extend your arms over the head onto the floor, that's another option as we inhale to extend arms and legs. And with the out breath, bringing them back in. Last round, inhale. And exhale. Time to release us into a restful state as you step your feet down to the ground. Wiggle through your shoulders to open your arms. Maybe using your props such as cushions and bolsters and blankets. Neither keep your feet on the ground and let your knees fall in or let your legs slide out and the toes roll out to the side. If possible, close the eyes or even use a night pillow or steady your gaze. Allow and indulge in these first moments of stillness where you can notice these many sensations as the body settles. As you follow those sensations of releasing into the ground, of approaching stillness. Notice there might be challenges within that stillness. If your mind wanders, embrace the thoughts that comes and decide to leave it until later or let it go entirely. The card for this morning says you are blessed regardless. Every experience enriches us and those around us in some way, regardless of what we achieve or don't achieve, do or don't do, all is a blessing in its own form or another. Nothing is a mistake, for all serves the divine purpose. All is blessed. Let that sink in. And maybe remind yourself throughout the day. All is one. Everything is blessed. So are you. If you want to remain in Shavasana because you've got time, please do so. 
Otherwise, begin to deepen your breathing. Start to move a little, wiggle toes, wiggle fingers, maybe have a stretch. Then returning the body to a seated shape. We'll bring our hands together at the heart. The thumbs lightly touching the sternum. Finish our practice with the sound of Om, followed by three shanties to invite peace as we inhale and exhale. And then inhaling for the Om. Um. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Gently bowing the head towards the heart. Extending to each other. Namaste. Namaste.